Okay, sorry guys, we were having a few technical difficulties, but I think we're ready to begin our first live Instagram video. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so I'm Meredith and this is Ashley from ZoomEd, and we're starting our new like Wednesday wisdom series that we're gonna be having every Wednesday at four. And kind of the point of this is to show you guys some of our behind the scenes things and maybe some tips and tricks about like animal care and just whatever you guys want like if you send us requests like we'll try to do a video about it yeah so yeah exciting it's I gonna know. be really fun <laughs> so for our first video today we're going to show you one of our closing rounds in the greenhouse that we have at our headquarters so if you're not familiar with what a round is it's how we open and we close our day in the animal room uh in the greenhouse everybody on the animal team does a round which is essentially just getting eyes on all of the animals, all of their habitats, and making sure that everything is pretty much okay. So we're gonna start actually with checking on Gus and Chabella, our green iguanas right behind us, and I'll show you sort of what we're looking for when we do a round, right? So I'm gonna go in there, because first of all, I wanna make sure that they're in there, and they have a heated house in this outdoor habitat because even though we're in sunny California, it does tend to get a little bit chilly at night sometimes. So they're probably in bed already. There they are. Our lovely green iguanas, Gus and Chabella. We're going to sweep their house out tomorrow. But Gus Gus is the orange one. Uh, he's a red iguana, but he's a green iguana. Um, and then Chabella is the one that looks really brown right now. Uh, she's, she ranges from green to brown in color. But their heaters are on, I can tell. Um, the temperature is just right. And so I will let them go back to bed where they want to be. Um, so they're in there. Everything in here looks secure. I don't see anything that's really out of place. Um, one thing I don't like is really gross dirty water so as soon as we're done with this part we'll go ahead and change that water out for them uh they love to poop in their water what can i say that's kind of a you know reptile thing to do i think so, <laughs> uh, so we want to make sure that there's liquid there's water for every single animal that they're alive and well and that they're secure so when we leave i'm not going to lock it up for real because like i said i got to go back and clean that water out but uh, we'll put their lock on and before we leave the greenhouse we'll make sure that this is really secure so that they don't get any unwanted visitors they don't somehow manage to get their way out in the middle of the night and then we'll do the same thing in the morning now I think we're gonna head into the greenhouse and look at the animals in there we've already done some of this round I'm not gonna lie so, we're just uh, showing you guys the exciting parts right now So in here, if you haven't already seen our greenhouse before in other tours or anything, uh, this is, we call it Turtle Nirvana, our greenhouse facility. On this side, we have tortoises and box turtles. And then over on this side, we have our aquatic turtles in the waterland tubs of varying sizes. Um, we've got a couple of extras. We have some green basilisks up there that we're going to take a look at in a couple minutes. And... Um, but until then, we're just going to sort of scan through the habitats and make sure that nothing is terribly out of place. And if there's anything we need to address tonight, we can take care of it before we go home. See our Russian tortoises out here. You guys can probably see there's a yellow sticker. Or I'm sorry, yellow, because I know my colors. <laughs> uh, there's a blue, a blue sticker on the back of this Russian tortoise. And a lot of the animals have these stickers on them. They're just kind of an identification tag, and uh, we hibernate these animals. And so during hibernation and throughout the year, we need to weigh them and monitor their health. And those stickers kind of give us a really simple way of being able to tell who's who. Uh, because Russian tortoises can all look very similar. When you have a large group of eastern box turtles, they also can look really similar. So that way we can just sort of um, see which one is which. We can go to their permanent record and check and, and see if they're having an issue that they've had in the past or, you know, whatever it may be. You might see blue stickers. Blue, not yellow. 
<laughs> so in the pens we like to make sure that there's water in the pond, that everything looks secure, we don't see any broken boards or anything. Uh, we'll often go in, we've already counted all the animals today, but we'll go in there and make sure that we find that there should be three marginated tortoises in here. So we've got two over here. And then there's another one over there in the corner. And since they've been so good today, we'll give them some of their most favorite treats. Give them some flowers if they want to have a little snack. Me. Hopefully. Yeah. He's going to try to eat it from the difficult yeah. instead of <laughs> the edge, right from the middle. Yeah. And if you're not aware, that's a hibiscus flower. They grow in all of our pens in the greenhouse out here. Sometimes the flowers fall and the tortoises get to munch on them. Um, sometimes we'll just come out and sort of harvest them and, uh, and spread them around as a fun treat. They're a, a very healthy treat for them, and we know that there aren't any pesticides or herbicides used in here because we have complete control over this environment. Yum! Yay! My other flower was rejected. I put him in front of it, and he turned around and walked back. <laughs> so we'll let him get hit. Wow, I can't talk. We'll let him get to that. <laughs> We're going to show you guys some more exciting things. So in our cup, we like to make sure that, again, there's water, which obviously there should be, but if there was a leak or something and all the water was draining out, that could be a problem we want to address at night. We like to make sure that the drains are not blocked, um, because if they do get clogged up, then the water will... See, can you see that drain? Yeah, really exciting stuff here, guys. Um, if that gets blocked up with algae or leaves or something, the water will flood onto the land side of the tub, which isn't usually a huge problem, although if there are eggs buried over there, it could drown the eggs, and we don't want to do that. Um, we also don't want it flooding to the point where turtles can escape. That's not fun. Uh, usually, we do have like backup holes drilled in the sides and in the bottoms of the land side of the tub so that if water gets over there, it, it can... Uh, Instead of overflowing the whole tub, it'll drain out. But still, something we want to try to avoid. These, can you guys see these trees? I'm really proud of these trees. This might be really weird. These are mangroves, and I actually grew these from seed pods that I got at a, a fish show at like a marine aquarium expo. And you get these little pods, and usually people grow them in reef tanks and stuff, and they get like you know, this big and they have a few leaves on the top, but these are very, very happy mangrove trees. And, um, and I love them, but I'm kind of a nerd, so. We also want to make sure that everybody has the right basking opportunities. Um, the way that the sun moves over the greenhouse throughout the day allows for all of the turtles to come up and bask. And, uh, and also to get UVB. We have UV penetrating um, glass up here. So it allows the, the ultraviolet B, which is how the animals synthesize their vitamin D3, um, to penetrate into this. So most household glasses and plastics will filter all of that out from the natural sun. But, uh, but in here, the animals still have exposure to it. So we like to make sure that they don't have too much shade blocking their basking sites. Um, and if there are a lot of animals, then we might need to have more basking opportunities. Um, one of the things that we do here to make sure that we, uh, that everybody gets a chance to bask is we close our greenhouse to human activity from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock every day. And a lot of these turtles are pretty shy. They don't like it when people are walking around, they'll bail out. And so, um, and they get in the water. If they don't bask enough, they can be subject to a lot of bacterial and fungal infections of the skin and the shell. 
really important that they're able to bath. So since they know from 12 to 3 every day no one's going to be out here, they usually come up pretty early and they'll spend a lot of time basking. We have camera systems in place so we can see that that's happening. And since we implemented that, and it's been years now, but since we implemented that, um, we just really haven't had problems with the skin and shelf. So that's kind of a fun trick. <laughs> uh, in this habitat here, uh, can you see, Meredith? There's um, basilisks. Yeah. And that's what this page is about. And these are green plume basilisks. <laughs> and uh, there are two, there's three females and a male in here. And um, they've been doing really, really well out here. Basilisks are kind of flighty, but we noticed when we moved them out here that they really calmed down an awful lot. So that's been really nice. In the bottom of this tub, we have reef turtles. And as we were checking in this habitat earlier, we found a little nest. And so we want to show you, um, all we did was uncover like the top of one egg. So I don't know if there's more eggs or, um, or if there's just one. And so I want to show you kind of how we dig that up. I got to go get a container though, okay? You want to look at maybe the basilisk or something for a minute while I can yeah. grab a cup? Yeah. Okay. So if you guys have any questions about any of the animals you've seen today, just let us know. If you have more video ideas that you want to see, send it to us in private messages. A couple people have said that it keeps pausing, so I'm sorry, we might have bad service out here in the greenhouse, but um, we'll work out the kinks before the series gets more consistent, but we'll save this video to be shown again later too, so you guys can watch it for the next 24 hours if it's pausing for you. video for you guys to watch for the next 24 hours so don't worry about missing out on that information it will be there for you um doesn't say anyone's watching okay and we're we'll continue the rest of our um, our project here so we were looking for some eggs in here and i've got my little container I'm going to scoop up just a little bit of sand, and that's not going to be the incubation media. Um, in a future video, we'll definitely do how we incubate eggs, but um, what the sand is going to do is keep the eggs from rolling around as I travel it from the greenhouse into our incubation room. So I'm just going to like scoop up a little bit of sand. It really doesn't have to be much. And then I'm going to go in here ah, under this plant. Cute, I know. And I'm just going to sort of gently move the sand away where I, I happen to know this nest is already here, um, but you can kind of see this is all we saw before, so I don't know how many eggs, if it's just one or if there's a clutch in there, um, but this is how we generally find them is we just dig around a little bit and then once you know that there's something going on, then we like to just gently move the sand away. I pull up this one egg and then I'm going to be really careful not to rotate it and I'm just going to move it into this container and let it sit at about the same angle it was. I'll probably end up slowly lying it down and uh, we'll see if there's anything else in this area or anywhere else in this tub. Um, generally this is how we spend a lot of our time. <laughs> is digging around for eggs and uh, it looks like that's the only one that's in this particular 
nest, which is kind of unusual. The reefs turtles will usually find like five to eight eggs. Um, uh, and they're pretty prolific. We do find a lot of eggs from them. Um, we also like to check in like the plant roots. Oh, I feel something. Ha ha. Sometimes if you're digging in a, um, a habitat like this, when your fingers go into the sand, sometimes you can feel that there's a, um, a hole. Instead of necessarily the egg, you'll just feel that there's kind of a void because they dig this nest and then, see this egg is already banding. That's a really good sign of fertility. Um, so I like to just gently, like I said before, move this, the, the soil away from it and then we'll pick it up. Don't rotate it and put him in here with his little buddy. And these are our Reeves turtles, correct? Yeah, Reeves okay. turtles. So Couple again, that was out. the only one. We might have a uh, an inexperienced female that's just like digging test nests and uh, burying one at a time. Um, usually they'll bury a whole bunch, they'll big, dig a nice big nest and, and lay them all together. But, um, but sometimes you'll find things like this too. They may have gotten disturbed in the process and uh, decided to leave or um, or just had a very very small clutch kind of unusual but it happens so what um, they love to lay their eggs in the plant roots sometimes and uh, that the roots give the eggs protection sorry there is a train track right behind our greenhouse so there goes the train bye train um, and so sometimes you have to just kind of get in there and and feel around to see if there might be any eggs in those plant roots because uh, it gets it gets pretty thick in there. So we'll dig just a little bit more and see if anything else pops up. I mean, it won't pop up. Find it. It's there. Dig it up. What do you guys think so far? Any ideas? What should we do? What should we talk about? Have fun. <laughs> Reggie says Jurassic Park question mark. Nice. Totally. It's essentially Park. where we work. Do you <laughs> see yeah. You see these dinosaurs above us? <laughs> I have a pair of frilled dragons that live at my desk. Totally dinosaurs. I love them. And for those of you just joining, we were mentioning earlier we had a few technical difficulties with this first Facebook Live that are Instagram live that we did, but we're going to be saving that video for you guys to look at later So don't worry about missing out and we're gonna be doing this probably every Wednesday if it goes well So let us know uh, Your requests for future video ideas that you'd like to see from us. So, okay. I'm I found something funny here. Okay. See this This is a uh, a life stage of these mealworms I saw one, there it is. See this super worm? So these are treats that we feed to our basilisks and not very often, but occasionally they'll climb out of the dish and, um, and get into the dirt. And these are essentially changing from this to the beetle that it'll become. I think it becomes a beetle. Um, I usually don't have this particular species uh, pupate. But, um, but yeah, that's what that weird little thing is. I'm gonna put it up here in the dish, then come over and have some snacks. There's a couple of these. Blech. <laughs> that's not my favorite thing in the world. Um, I don't have a problem with bugs. I really don't like Jerusalem crickets or potato bugs and those little larval forms or those little uh, pupating things. Not my favorite. And Connor, uh, that's me, says, are these beer eggs? And these are Reeves turtle eggs that we're digging up. We're out in our uh, turtle nirvana greenhouse right now. Uh, just showing you guys kind of what our closing rounds look like. Um, this is the first video in our series, hopefully, of uh, uh, many videos showing you guys some behind the scenes, some animal care tips, and just whatever you guys request. So 
Um, definitely send us some private messages with your requests on what you'd like to see in future videos. So when you're not Ooh. real careful, sometimes you find a nest by just digging your hand in there. So I'm gonna try not to rotate these anymore. Sorry, Meredith, I'm kind of like in your face. In your face. Um, so this is more what a typical clutch will look like, where you see several eggs all kind of bunched together. And when, uh, when we're done picking up these eggs, we'll go over to the other side and we'll see if we can't find a Reeves turtle that we can show you. Look, there's another one. Woo. So you can see what these turtle, what the adults look like. They're really a cool little turtle. There's one creeping on the ramp right now. It's it. probably oh, not yeah. going to get close enough to film. Yeah, there's some pretty bad glare. No, the glare's too bad. All right, well, I think that's it. For um, that Silky's to go asked, Do you feed silkworms? Um, we don't yet. Um, we feed a lot of cans, and out here it's hard to feed live because, like you saw, sometimes they'll crawl out and then they're in here. So, we, we don't want to at least these mealworms will they'll get out and then they'll just be in the sand and they won't like populate in the greenhouse or get out into the environment because. We do have automatic um, vents that open and close, so a lot of this greenhouse is actually kind of open to the world <laughs> in a way. And so we wouldn't want to put anything in here that could get out and um, and cause any kind of environmental problems. Uh, again, like I said, those, those these super worms, like they fall down, they go in the sand or they go in the water, but they can't climb out of this tub. Um, we, I don't know if you can see it here, Meredith. I'll let you have this tool. Um, Hold it. Okay, we kind of have this little dish with a moat around it so when we put the worms in there in the morning we put water um, and that helps keep the ants out because we because it is an outdoor facility and so we do get ants in here sometimes too so I'm feeling like man you guys <laughs> I'm have some worms all right Oh, there's one. Oh. What, in here? No, a Reeves turtle. Oh, oh, oh. Peeked oh, its I head up it. and then oh. popped it back down. Oh, I'm sorry. So then we cover up our little hole. And like I said, another time we will, um, we'll show you how we set up these eggs for incubation. Because I won't just like put my little Betty Crocker measuring cup <laughs> in the incubator and call it a day. Um, I'm going to close these guys up and we'll see if we can find a Reeves turtle to show you. Yeah. I'm sure we can. So I don't know if you guys can see some of these guys swimming around in here. There's one over there. Oh, yeah. Aha! Got one. Alright. So this is a male reed turtle. He's got, um, he's got a couple little bites on his neck, and that's pretty normal that we see in, uh, in breeding season. It looks like it's old scar tissue, um, but, but they, uh, they bite pretty enthusiastically. Um, the males will breed with males or females, <laughs> and they hold on to the neck when they do that. So sometimes you will see these old scars in breeding groups or anyone that's living with a male. Um, so the males get really dark like this because you can see his face is like black, his skin is black. And then there's a female, I don't know if you guys can see her, she's just kind of hiding. It's hard to see with the she's glare. Under that log. And the female has a lot more like um, markings, like kind of some yellow coloration. There's a girl. So 
the girl, you can see she's less dark in color. She has um, kind of some patterning on her plastron. Um, you can kind of see the yellow striping on her neck, yellow in her eyes. She's just not quite that black, black um, turtle of the, the male. So she's also a bit bigger. The females get larger than the males do. Yeah, so, this is the turtle who's eggs. Well, this is one of the females in here that may have just laid eggs for us to find. You can see her there she comes. She actually has quite a bit of color on her. Oh yeah. Some of these reefs are not terribly colorful. All right. I'm gonna flip it back around. All right. Okay guys, so that concludes our first live video. Just let us know what you thought, what future video ideas you'd like to see from us. Um, and we'll have this available for the next 24 hours uh, for anyone that missed out, or I know we were having technical difficulties earlier, so you'll be able to watch that. We'll later. get better, we promise. Yeah. <laughs> as we go forward. <laughs> yeah, so thank you everybody for watching and we hope to see you guys next time.